Hey everyone, let's review the parts of the Doric Temple. We'll see this basic uh, temple construction change throughout the, the Greek period, the Roman period, and as we move into the Middle Ages, we'll see what parts of the Doric Temple continue to find its way into the churches and cathedrals. So let's, let's begin. And here we have a face-on view of the front of a Doric-style temple. And we know it's a Doric because the columns are very plain. So we have the top triangle area called the pediment. We have this long section here that's in between the pediment and the columns called the entablature. And then we have the columns on the bottom. So let's look at each of these areas in a little more detail starting from the bottom of the column. So the bottom of the column is made up of two parts. We have the stylobate here in red and the column this area in green, and that column is broken down even farther into um, the shaft, that's what this part is called, and the capital itself, the part on the top. Okay. This, this bottom part, this shaft, um, changes over time. It becomes more complex in some places, um, so we'll see that it gets a lot more layers. But for our purposes, the terms that are highlighted here are all the ones that we'll need to know. There are many more sub parts that we could discuss, but this is all we need. Let's move on to the middle, and this is called the entablature. Now the middle is the part that this entablature, it sits on top of the columns and separates the columns from the pediment. Okay, So this is made up of the most uh, complex collection of parts. We have the architrave, and this part is often left plain, but sometimes it is filled in with carvings. Then we have the frieze, and again the frieze um, will be carved as well. In the Doric period we have additional um, uh, uh, construction, decorative construction, called the triglyphs. That's these areas here that have, are kind of fluted. They kind of look like the sawed end of beams. At least that's what some scholars believe. That this is a holdover from the, the, the end of the beams that you would see in wooden temple construction. We don't know that for sure. But at any rate, they're called the triglyphs. And we wouldn't carve on those because they're fluted and we, we wouldn't see uh, any, any pictures very easily. But the second part we have in the frieze is called the metopes, and these are the flat sections in between the triglyphs, and you would have seen some of these carved in. Okay, let's review that again really fast. The architrave, the frieze, and that frieze is made up of the triglyphs, those fluted areas, and the flat places, the metopes. And finally we go up to the top of the temple, and inevitably made up of a triangle, right? And you see all sorts of additional kind of elements to the molding and different kind of elements to the top raking cornice, and we're not going to worry about those. We are going to look at the cornice that is at the bottom that sits on top of that entablature. It's the bottom of the pediment. And the pediment itself, this carved triangle area here in the middle where we do see a lot of carving. And those are all the elements that you'll need to know for your um, in, in, in your test on um, on these uh, parts of the temple.